I first became involved with uh, the idea and notion of Swan Lake in 1995 or with Matthew Bourne. My initial reaction when Matt told me he wanted male swans was, uh, is he mad? <laughs> um, I thought it was a very bold move to have male swans. Um, having already seen what he'd done with um, Nutcracker and Highland Fling, um, I knew that he was a very clever man and whatever he put his mind to would work. It was something that um, hadn't occurred to me. I was originally thinking already of doing Swan Lake, um, I was thinking of casting dancers that I'd been working with at that point. And suddenly this idea came up that someone like Adam, almost like a creature from another world to us at the time, who was a rising star at the Royal Ballet, he'd recently been promoted to principal, but very recently. The fact that he sort of seemed interested in doing something seemed sort of a perfect, perfect timing to bring in this uh, different kind of dancer to our world and uh, it's kind of worked for the piece. And when the idea was first broached by Matthew, I remember thinking, oh, my goodness, can we do, are we allowed to do that? I mean, can we actually do that? From a classical ballet point of view, which is my background, you know, when you ever, ever you think of swans, you think of, of these elegant, beautiful creatures, soft, um, but actually in reality, they're actually quite ferocious, wild um, animals. And um, I thought that by casting males in, in the roles of the swans, we could bring that side of swans into the story. Not, not that you can't do that with women, but at that point, it felt like it was a really good road to go down. Yeah, well, I remember when we, we did some workshop weeks on it before we actually started the rehearsals proper, just to start getting some swan movement going. And part of that process was watching videos of swans. Um, they're not the most elegant <laughs> creatures, <laughs> especially when they're taking off and landing. They're quite gangly and ungainly. And so we, to try and find a way to represent that in a kind of aesthetically pleasing way wasn't always easy. We started choreographing together, really, even in our first photo shoot which we did before we'd created any choreography. We had to come up with some photos and so a lot of the things that went into the photography with Hugo Glendinning um, were things we made up in the studio that then went into the show. It's an odd way around to do it, but that's sort of what happened. We had to come up with something. And Adam was very, I think, very significant in the creation of this piece, not just because his performance was wonderful and people loved him in it and he had an enormous impact personally in it, but I think he brought something to us at the time. I mean, we've been known to be quite a quirky, funny company. Um, you know, we had our moments of more moving material in our pieces, but I think basically we were known as a, a quirky company that had a, a reputation for humour. I think uh, Adam brought a seriousness to us and made me, in particular, want to make this piece meaningful. My influences were very much the people that we had in the room at the time um, who were coming up with the, um, the material. So um, Scott Ambler, Etta Murfitt, um, David Hughes uh, and myself came up with a lot of the material and, and we were, at the time, we didn't know what we were creating, you know, we didn't realise we were creating an iconic thing or iconic moves, we were just trying to be truthful to the swan that we wanted to project in this piece. I mean, I can tell you one story, we're creating the, uh, many of the sequences in Act One, well the swan isn't in Act One, or the stranger and we hadn't done act four yet so I said to Adam go up in the upstairs studio as it was at the time sad as Wells and just listen to the music and try and think what happens here you know it's it's a incredibly powerful music one climax after another you know it's sort of quite hard to um, imagine what might be going on and he sort of like had a lot of time on his hands and sort of came up with various things that, that then went into the show and we created this act four which has become very sort of memorable and moving and powerful, but a little bit difficult to explain what exactly happens. It's much more about the audience um, feeling something through the music and the movement and the action that takes place on stage. But if you try and explain it to someone about a lot of swans in a bedroom with a big bed, and it, it, it starts to sound silly. So it's best not talked about, but I think Adam had a lot to do with um, how that was created. I've just been in rehearsal now and talking to the to today's swans about, you know, not only do we is it important to show the masculinity, the strength, the beauty, but also the vulnerability as well, um, because 
when animals come face to face with humans, there's always a kind of tentativeness. And that, I think, especially in Act Two of, of, the, of the show, needs to, needs to be um, shown quite a lot. So the kind of head under the arm is all to do with, is kind of a, a protection, you're protecting yourself. All of those kind of swan arms are all about the swan protecting themselves. And it's only when they open up that they, that they allow, you know, something or someone to come close to them. So that was kind of our thinking at the time. And, and yeah, just to say, who knew it was going to be <laughs> the success it was. When we first premiered Swan Lake at Sadler's Wells, it was quite shocking because in the first sort of 20 minutes, there were people who were standing up and leaving. And I remember watching it going, oh my God, is this going to be okay? The attention went much more on male swans because it was such an iconic image for people, the female dancing swan. To have a male dancing swan was very unexpected. People couldn't imagine what it was going to look like. When we first started to do it, we had walkouts with the Prince and Swan dancing together. But we had a, a slightly aggressive uh, attitude towards it from some members of the audience and some uh, people refused to come and see it. It got dubbed the Gay Swan Lake, which was, in some ways was not what the aim was, but it certainly was a story within that 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 was very meaningful for, for gay audiences. And I, I celebrate that still, I did then and I do now. It was such a shock for audiences that they didn't know what they were seeing initially. And then once they'd got into it and they started to see more and more of Act Two and more of the Swans, they became um, excited by it. By the end, uh, and the end is so extraordinary and dramatic, the audience literally stood up and started clapping and I remember sitting there and thinking oh my goodness this is extraordinary absolutely extraordinary and it was then when I realized that the show was going to have a massive impact. I think it was quite a while a good few years after we after we opened um, that it became suggested that you know that, that the, the role was was influencing boys to take up dancing. The fact that the show is still going on now and, and people can take their young boys to see a show like this, which represents male dancing in such a strong way, I think is brilliant. It still seems to inspire people, still seems to move people. And therefore we, we get excited about doing it because that's what we're here for, to entertain. Mm -hmm.